Greetings from Jerry World and welcome to America's second worst halftime show. What's the worst one? What's the other one you could be watching? I, where'd the points go? <laughs> Did Houston and Oklahoma use them all up? I don't know. Uh, LSU does not appear to be generating any offense at Lambeau Field. And look, Wisconsin's defense certainly deserves some credit for that, but what happened? Where? Where is that LSU offense? And I guess now we know why Trevor Knight was pursued so heartily by the Tigers as well as Texas A&M. He wound up, of course, at Texas A&M. The Aggies beating UCLA at halftime, but only by a little bit. And it seemed like the offenses in that game kind of got things figured out as the half rolled along, started to move the ball better, still kind of tough to reach the end zone. Uh, but, you know, Knight looks pretty comfortable in that offense. Josh Rosen, when he's not running for his life, is making some great throws. So it, it's going to be an excellent second half. I think I got a feeling they're going to score more in the second half. I got a feeling A&M and UCLA will, will figure things out offensively. I still worry about Josh Rosen, though, because it doesn't seem like UCLA is blocking Miles Garrett and Deshaun Hall all that well. But I think that's going to be a, a little more exciting second half than it may be for the LSU fans. I don't, I don't know what's going on with LSU's offense. I mean, we thought that it would be tough if nothing changed. You know, if Brandon Harris wasn't any better, what's going to happen? Well, you're seeing it right now. Uh, they are not moving the ball, and it's got to be frustrating. Now, Wisconsin's defense, they're used to seeing a, a, an offense that pounds you straight ahead. So Leonard Fournette running inside, not exactly anything new to them. You know, maybe the talent level is slightly a little bit higher, but it didn't look like it on fourth and one. So what do you guys want to talk about? Ask away. I am here for you because I'm not that interesting myself asking myself questions. So fire away with whatever you got, whether it's LSU, Wisconsin, Texas A&M, UCLA, South Alabama's big win against Mississippi State, Houston's huge win against Oklahoma, Oklahoma's terrible loss against Houston, you name it. What you got? JJ Termite, who is your favorite baseball player? Ryan Sandberg. He doesn't play anymore, does he? Yeah, I haven't watched baseball in a while. No, Ryan Sandberg was my guy. I love that guy. I was a big WGN Cubs fan, and that was that was the man right there. So, <laughs> Tony Thomas, what was the worst halftime show? The worst halftime show is the other halftime show you could be watching instead of this one. So, I mean, I, I feel like it's a it's an improvement. <sighs> Noah Dutton, who will win between Alabama and USMC? I'm going to go with the Marine Corps on that one. I, I, oh, you meant USC. Okay. So I think it's going to be Alabama, but I don't know. <laughs> a lot of my guesses have been off. I thought Oklahoma would, would beat Houston. Uh, Houston did not only just beat Oklahoma, they beat Oklahoma pretty thoroughly. So thought LSU would score a little more against Wisconsin. Hold on. i got to let people buy here. <laughs> Sorry. And it, I may get kicked out of my seat here. I apologize. I was trying to be quiet in a corner of the press box, but we'll see. Oh, Jay Moynihan, La Tech just tied up Arkansas. Not a great start for the SEC to start the season. No, no, that Thursday night scare from Appalachian State in Milan Stadium, not good. All those people who bought cabanas at, at, in Starkville watching Mississippi State lose to South Alabama, not good. So uh, Kimberly Wood and Griffiths, the impact of Houston beating Oklahoma. Well, Houston still has a chance to compete for the college football playoff, which is really saying something because, look, no group of five team really has a chance unless they schedule a certain way. Now, they're going to need help from Oklahoma. Oklahoma needs to have a good season now. Houston has a unique opportunity because, look, the American is definitely the best of the group of five leagues, and it's no cakewalk in the American. Remember, that really good Houston team last year that beat Florida State in the Peach Bowl, they lost to UConn. But let's say they can get through the American. They play Louisville in November. Louisville is good. Now, we don't know how Louisville is going to fare against Clemson and Florida State, but the thought is they're going to fare pretty well against just about everybody. So if they can beat Oklahoma and beat Louisville and go through the American undefeated, they could make the playoff conceivably. And they're the only group of five team in the country we can say that about. So you know, it, it, that stays alive. As far as the Big 12 goes, 
it's really interesting, the dynamic here. And we talked about this a little bit this week. Does beating Oklahoma actually hurt Houston trying to get into the Big 12? Because if you're Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Kansas, Iowa State, you're saying, do we really want to give these guys Big 12 cachet in recruiting as they sit in the middle of the Big 12's most fertile recruiting ground? I mean, that, that's, that's not good in terms of competition if you're Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Now, Texas, Texas Tech, we understand they're probably back in Houston because of political reasons. Uh, Texas, you know, they've bought a bunch of land in Houston. They'd like to expand the UT system into Houston. So that's a, probably a fair swap. And you talk about what kind of value you get from that. I could understand why they would back Houston in that situation. But I mean, it, it's, it'd be tough if you ask coaches, should they let Houston in the Big 12? They're going to go, no, 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 no. Please don't do that. If you ask presidents, it may be a different story. So we're going to have to wait and see what the college presidents in the Big 12 decide because they're, they're the ones who make the decision ultimately, and they don't always go along with what their coach or what their AD says because if you ask the coaches and the ADs, they would be like, no, 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 we do not want those guys being able to recruit better players because look at what they can do with the ones they can recruit now. Jamie White, what's Auburn's chance tonight? Got to make Clemson make mistakes. Got to force turnovers. Got to get after Deshaun Watson. Uh, Auburn is better on both lines of scrimmage than they were last year. We don't know what they're going to look like with Sean White running the offense. Uh, look, they, they were getting better last year with White until he got hurt. So you know, maybe things turn around. But really, it'll be up to, to Carl Lawson and Montrevious Adams and those guys to get after Deshaun Watson because if you can force them to make mistakes, then maybe you keep that score down. But otherwise, Clemson's offense is going to be really hard for anyone to stop. I mean, you saw them last year against Alabama. They bring almost everybody back. It, they also get Mike Williams back. And if you don't know who Mike Williams is, he got hurt in the first game last season. He broke a bone in his neck scoring a touchdown. He's a 6'4", 225-pound burner. Basically, he is what a first-round receiver looks like. And he adds a different dynamic to that Clemson offense that they didn't have last year. And what you're thinking Wait, there, there's something they didn't have last year? Yeah, that. So that's the issue. You, you've got to make them turn the ball over. Otherwise, it could be a long night for Auburn. What else? Oh, Kevin Green with kick six part due from the Houston game. Exactly right. I, I think we have learned now definitively that field goal teams are not designed to cover kick returns. They're not. I mean, you, you get your best blockers, you get your offensive linemen, and you get some tight ends. Okay, that's not who's on your punt coverage team, for comparison's sake. Your punt coverage team is going to be a bunch of linebackers, safeties, uh, corners. You know, they're fat, guys who can, can block a little bit, they don't have to protect very long for the punt, but then they can get down the field and cover. Well, that's not what you have when you have a field goal team on the field. So, yeah, if you're kicking a long field goal, you need to expect the possibility of a return and accept the possibility that you may not have the personnel to stop it. Because, and you saw it this time. All right, Jamie White. I'm for Bama. Watching these games has me, ner has me nervous. Now you, look, you should be nervous. I'll tell you why. USC, when they get off the bus, looks like Alabama. And there aren't many teams you can say that about. You know, USC has recruited very well over the years. Even when they were sanctioned, even when they were down in scholarship numbers, they were still getting those five-star guys. So. Athletically, they're, they're right there. I mean, look, Juju Smith-Schuster may be the best receiver Alabama sees all season, other than maybe Calvin Ridley at practice. Uh, Adoree Jackson is as good of an athlete as Alabama's going to see in the SEC. Uh, USC has plenty of talent. Now, USC's real young up front on the defense. That could be an issue. But Alabama revamped offensive line, and... Ryan Kelly was the most important player in Alabama's offense last year. And I say that knowing full well that a different offensive player won the Heisman Trophy. So what happens replacing him? It's, it's Bradley Bozeman who's going to replace him tonight. Uh, we thought it was going to be Ross Pierce Baker, but then they moved it around. So they've got a, a situation where I think it's probably to, to have some flexibility there. If somebody gets hurt, they can move some, some pieces around and Pierce Baker can slide in at center. But we don't know what Alabama's offense is going to be. For the third consecutive year, they're kind of – starting from scratch and I think it's going to look a lot more like 2014's offense with Blake Sims but maybe with a better thrower running it that's that's the issue they're really loaded on the perimeter we don't know what they're going to be like in the running game uh, Bo Scarborough 
you know, size-wise, looks like Derrick Henry. Durability-wise, historically, he, he doesn't act like Derrick Henry. Uh, he's, he's gotten hurt, you know, in high school, he's gotten hurt. So Derrick Henry was a cyborg. You could hand him the ball 45 times. He just got better as the game went on. Uh, Damian Harris, we'll see how he does behind that revamped offensive line. But Alabama will be able to make big plays on the perimeter. Ridley's as good as they come. Our Darius Stewart is very good. Robert Foster was supposed to be their best receiver going into last season. They didn't know how good Ridley was going to be. He got hurt real early, so he's there now. And then you got Garrett Dieter, who came in from Bowling Green, put up huge numbers last year. So I think Alabama will be a pretty dynamic offense. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why I feel fairly safe picking them over USC. But, shoot, as I watch these games, I don't even know. How hot does Dan Mullen see at Mississippi State get a Will Muschamp and the Gamecocks go in and knock them off next week? Wow. Wow. I, I've not even considered that possibility because Mississippi State fans, their AD, Scott Strickland, are the most reasonable in terms of expectations in the SEC West. They are absolutely, you know, understand how hard their job is. And it, see, it seems they appreciate, you know, the improvement during the Dak Prescott era. I mean, that was a historic run for Mississippi State. But yeah, if you lose to South Alabama and then a South Carolina team that's not supposed to be very good in consecutive weeks, that would be, man. I don't think there would be any sort of hot seat firing talk, but things would get pretty, pretty weird if that continued through this year and then you, you go into the next season with some hot seat, hot seat talk. But it wouldn't be this season. You know, people understand. It's a hard job. They just got done with a fairly historic run with Dak Prescott. So it, it's not so easy to, to just reload. All right, well guys, I appreciate it. I gotta take off. Games are about to start again. So I'm gonna go watch and have fun watching the games tonight. And I will talk to you again fairly soon. Talk to you later, bye.